Blessed Tuesday morning, my friends in Christ. Just thankful to the good Lord to come together with you again today to be able to share God's word with you and I hope to be a source of blessing and just thankful for all of you who watch and are uh, blessed as iron sharpens iron together as we go through the thought for the day, the word of God, Matthew chapter eight, uh, chapter eight. And when it came to verse 19, it speaks of a man who says, I will come and follow you, Lord. And Jesus goes on to say in Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, Foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And then right after that, in verse 21, we see another potential disciple coming up to Jesus and says, I'll follow you, but let me bury my father first. And Christ says, let the dead bury the dead and come follow me. And today, as I was reading that, I wanted to speak a little bit about discipleship and following the Lord and the cost of following Christ. I know in my own personal life, I have at times, looking back at my Christian walk, have underestimated what it really means to follow Jesus. Oftentimes, I think of salvation as just accepting Christ and being thankful to God for his love and mercy. And those are true. But the cost of following the Lord is deep. In Luke chapter 14, verse 26, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said basically there that if you do not love him more than your own parents, and some uh, versions of our English Bible will say if you don't hate your mother and father or your family, you're basically you're not a disciple of mine. Now, that's in the English version of the Bible, but in the original Greek, which the Bible was written in, it's speaking of having less affection. Doesn't mean we hate our mothers and fathers. We, we are to honor our mothers and fathers. And the Bible never contradicts itself, but a better translation and from the original Greek is basically having a less affection for the things of this world, the people of this world. In other words, we are to seek first the kingdom of God as Christ told us in Matthew chapter six, verse 33. Discipleship is costly. It might cost us the affections of those around us. Uh, as I said, we put the, uh, I have a wife and two daughters. I love them dearly. I love them more than my own life, but I will not put them before my affections for Christ. He must come first. Another way we have to count the cost of following Christ is our own personal comfort and interest. In Matthew chapter four, verse 19, there were two disciples two brothers, Andrew and Peter, who would become disciples of Christ, Jesus told them, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 20, we are told, they cast away their nets. And I'm asking myself this, what nets do I need to cast away? Trusting in my 401k, trusting in my pension, trusting in some retirement plan, because I'm at an age now where I can retire by the grace of God, I have put in enough years. In the city job that I have, a civil service job I have as a custodian. And I hear a lot of guys I work with, you know, because it's the world. Um, how many years you got to put in? I remember something that was said by uh, Nelson Rockefeller, who was a um, multi-billionaire. And someone asked him, how much money is enough? And he said, just a little bit more. And that's the mentality, unfortunately, that a lot of people have when it comes to their uh, security and their life. A little bit more, a little, one more year at the job, a little bit more in my pension, padding this, padding that. My friends, sometimes in life following Christ means casting away these nets. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a nest egg, we shouldn't uh, be good stewards of our money, be secure, uh, for you and your family. What I'm saying is our trust first and foremost should be in the Lord. Counting the cost of discipleship can be painful in the sense that it might cost us some comfort, might cost us some relationships in this life. Christ himself told us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, if anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow me. Picking up a cross is painful. It's sacrificial, but that's the life that Christ set for us. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, it says that Christ suffered for us, setting us an example. Oftentimes, we are 
and I'm guilty of this myself. We're creatures of habit and we're creatures of comfort. We wake up every day, we want the same routine, eat the same food, uh, go to the gym about the same time every day, we go to work the same time every day. Uh, we, we, we're a nation, a culture of people that don't want to feel any discomfort. I am the same way, who wants to feel pain? We wanna numb that pain right away. But oftentimes I find in my life, pain and suffering actually could be a blessing from God because it'll draw me closer to the Lord more and more in my life. But my friends, we're living in a day, and I was recently reading uh, about the life, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah and those cities and Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 and 25. We know that uh, God destroyed those cities. And it also says the vegetation in those cities in Genesis chapter 19, verse 25. And I was thinking here in America right now, we have these lantern flies flying all over the place, uh, destroying all the vegetation. They're destroying the trees at my job. Two trees are dead now. And God, God's ways are always the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just as God judged Sodom and Gomorrah because of sexual immorality and pride, Ezekiel 16 verse 49 reminds us that there were proud people and pride and sexual immorality often go together. And here in America, we see so much pride. Be proud of your, uh, your life matters and be proud of the color of your skin. Be proud of your sexual orientation. Uh, we're living in a day where, as it says in Judges chapter 17, verse 6, and verse 21, verse tw chapter 21, verse 25 of Judges, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. But my friends, we are not to be followers of this world. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 reminds us that oftentimes we go to the scriptures and see what happened to other people as a warning for us that we don't fall into the same pattern. My friends, I hope today's devotional video will give us a desire to follow the words of God. Martin Luther, who founded the uh, Reformation by the grace of God, was born in 1843, died in 1546. He warned the people of his day. Following Christ is not so much about being thankful for his love and mercy, but obeying his commands. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. May we be as John chapter 10, verse 27 reminds us, sheep who hear your voice, not only hear it, but obey your word. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my friends.